We're getting right into it with the darkest, most emotional chord progressions that are perfect for hip hop, trap, and drill. I mean, I, I get it, but the free MIDI pack containing all the chord progressions is below, but also here. Which one's my personal favorite, Anthony? Number nine. Okay, cool. My favorite chord progression is number nine, so stick around. This is the best chord progression anyone's ever come up with. This is the epic, dark, no light, power progression. Anthony, did you name all of them like this? C minor and A flat major. This chord progression has to be one of the most epic and dark progressions ever. You'll hear this one in Little Baby's biggest hits, J. Cole's Middle Child, Kodak Black's Walk, and Chief Keef's Love Sosa. This is such a common one. Let me know in the comments below what other tracks use it. This progression works so well because it's really simple. Both chords share a lot of the same notes. This makes melody writing over the chords extremely easy. Elongating the chords to as long as four bars each really helps create a build, making the switch between chords even more powerful. No light. Number two, this one's classy. Check it out. A flat minor seven, E flat seven sus two, and E flat minor. When you start adding sevenths to your minor chords, it gets a little bit less dark, but still dark, but classy. This is the exact chord progression from Drake's Child's Play. I'm not a child, but I'm still playing it. Child's Play, bounce that shit like What really makes this chord progression stand out is the delayed resolution from the E flat seven sus two chord to E flat minor. Yes. It's such a smooth resolution. It works great because you can slam an 808 on the root note as the upper notes change. Very dark, very epic, but not too dark. Child's Play. Number three, diabolical. <laughs> A flat major, G major, C minor, E flat major. This has to be the most diabolical sounding progression ever. It's truly evil. You might recognize it from J. Cole's hard hitting She Knows. What makes this progression so evil sounding is the chromaticism from A flat major to G major, which is the five chord of C minor. This is what's called a secondary dominant with a tritone substitution. And everyone knows tritones are the devil's interval. <laughs> yeah. Remember when I just said G major was the five chord of C minor? Well, what's the five chord of G major? D major, of course. This is the secondary dominant. The next step is to go up or down a tritone from D major to get A flat major. Still confused? So am I. I've linked more resources in the description below. I named this next one Sinister. You'll hear why. E flat minor, A flat minor. This chord progression keeps it simple, but there's so much you can do with it. The riff in Kendrick Lamar's Humble comes from these two simple chords. You can never go wrong going from minor chord to minor chord to keep things sounding dark and sinister. No light. Whenever you want to hit the light switch, you can always make the second chord major for a bit of a lift. We'll get more into that later. Looking for something epic, but fun? Check this out. G minor. F major, E flat major. Epic is the first word that comes to mind when playing this progression. Like a rocket taking off to space and the fuselage detaching and burning up in the atmosphere. It's just as epic as that, or even more. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> this progression is featured in the track, For Fun, by Little Uzi Vert. What makes this progression so powerful and epic is the last two major chords that inevitably return to the minor chord. When you use this progression, aim to make the E flat major chord twice as long. Then you'll have an even number of bars when it repeats. Number six is pure darkness. What the? Ugh. E flat minor, D diminished, F diminished, E flat minor. This is just pure darkness. Don't touch the light. I took this chord progression from Little Baby's Pure Cocaine. It uses one of the darkest chords in music, the diminished triad. Going from a minor chord to a diminished chord just one semitone away, you can't get darker than that. 
What's really interesting is that it moves to an F diminished, which is almost the same as the D diminished, just one note difference, before falling to the E flat minor chord. That's the cool thing about diminished chords. They're symmetrical, which means you can move them up or down a minor third and get the same harmonic function. I like that about diminished chords too. Number seven is just chill. You'll see. You'll see. You'll see what I mean. Just chill. That's, that's the progression, that's it. Oh. C minor. GD Lowe's track Backbone just hangs out on C minor. Sometimes the root note changes to G, but it goes back to C pretty quickly. As long as the groove is there and the production is good, it's still gonna be impactful. Sticking to one chord only can be risky though. It's a lot more difficult to build and maintain the energy in your track. You can add more variety to a single chord progression by adding extensions or inversions of that chord. Consider having lots of different layers and contrasting sections to keep the movement going. Up next, the grinder. How do you name these things? G minor, A flat major. This progression is from Yeats' song, System. You can't go wrong with this one. It's just begging for a heavy beat behind it. Yeah. This is another one that's common though, so if you know another song that uses this progression, let me know below. What makes this progression so powerful is that the chords come from the Phrygian mode. This means they're built from the G Phrygian scale. You can build chords in any scale by taking every other note after the note you're starting on. In the case of this scale, you start on G, and every other note gives you the chord of G minor. The Phrygian mode's characteristic is the flat two. In this case, the flat two is A flat. By taking every other note after A flat, you get A flat major. You can do this with any scale to get really interesting harmonic possibilities. Number nine is called Climbing Up the Walls. Don't get the title, neither do I. Let's go! B minor, G major, E major. This one has an eerily uplifting quality to it. It comes from the song Climbing Up the Walls by Radiohead. Oh, I get it. Climbing up the walls. Just like how our YouTube channel needs more subscribers. Climb that wall with us by hitting the like and subscribe buttons down below. Back to the video. It's that E major chord at the end of the progression that really pulls it up. But the return to B minor makes it a little unsettling. The E major has a G sharp in it, which comes from B Dorian. It has a natural six in the scale. Dorian has such a sad but epic quality to it. I'm sure you'll recognize it from Mad World by Tears for Fears. While Radiohead isn't trap or hip hop, this chord progression is dark and epic enough to support a really powerful beat. Finally, number 10, epic, dark, no light, but longer. Seriously? E sus two, C major, A minor, F sharp diminished seven. To justify the terrible name, let me tell you that it has the same qualities as the first progression, but it's longer. It has an A minor and an F sharp diminished seven. This one is used by Eminem on his 2000 hit, Kim. The expansion on that already powerful first chord progression really makes this one a storyteller. The C major brightens it up a bit, but then you get hit by the A minor, followed by a huge uppercut by one of the darkest chords ever, the F sharp diminished seven. <sighs> no light, but longer. Thanks for watching, everyone. See ya. It's a little literal, don't you think? I'm not going to be able to see the piano. Okay. <laughs> it's like Mr. Bean comedy over here.